Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor. And today I'm very excited because we have Henry Woodman on the show, and he's an entrepreneur, and he has an amazing story to tell. And he's going to talk about the book, The Reincarnation of Marie, which was written by his father. And he's going to explain a story behind it that really is going to knock the socks off of you. So Henry, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. And I want to hear more about this book because you were giving me a little synopsis before we started and you got me hooked. I'm going to like order it as soon as I get off this podcast with you. I love it. Thank you. <clears throat> and, and and it's nice to be here. And if you're wearing socks, I hope it knocks it off. If not, knock something off. <laughs> um, so let's see. Tell me about uh, myself. You know, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and say I consider myself more than not a fairly hedonistic and opportunistic entrepreneur, meaning I, I would do things that that I found I wanted to do or opportunities that presented themselves. And, and I'll give you an example. In college, I went to uh, the U of A in Tucson. Um, it's 1979, and I was addicted terribly to a video game called Pac-Man, right? And I'm sitting in a laundromat in Tucson, and I didn't want to crack the books, and I got two hours to sit there watching my clothes spin, and I'm thinking of Pac-Man, right? And I'm like, oh, wait a second. I got a pocket full of quarters, and they should have a video game in here. Right. So instead of saying, man, somebody should do something, I went back to my dorm room. I called every laundromat in Tucson and I said, you guys have video games? And they would say no. And I was thinking, well, uh, would you like one? And a couple would say yes. And I thought, OK, I'll share the revenue with you. Now, I had no idea how this was going to happen because I had no money. So I took my <clears throat> my student uh, funds, if you will, and I went to an auction at the time, they had these uh, video arcades in, in malls and stuff, and there mm -hmm. were a couple of games that nobody played. They were back in the corner, and eventually they just got rid of them because they were taking up space, right? Right. So they would sell them at auction. They were horrible, but mm -hmm. I bought one cheap, probably cheaper than the software, put it in my first laundromat, and I'm sure the people that used it went, okay, I'll, I'll waste my time. I'll put a quarter in. What a piece of junk, right? <laughs> Eventually, I'd move them around. You know, I'd buy more and more. And then I'd move them from one laundromat to the next. So they'd see a new one every week. But that was my first sort of dive into entrepreneurship because I I had a need. And, yeah. and sadly, is I couldn't even play the games that I bought because I would be taking away from my money, right? I'd go to a laundromat. There was somebody playing. I wouldn't wait and go, okay, I'm going to play it. And I'll play it for free. No, 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 yeah. no, 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 right? <laughs> um, so that was the first uh, into uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, then I, I studied radio television in college. I moved to Los Angeles with dreams of producing and directing movies. Mm -hmm. uh, that did not happen. Mm -hmm. But while I was there, uh, my father had written a book. He was a travel writer and a nonfiction writer. But he wrote this. It was more of a manuscript, kind of a tribute to a friend of his. And right. while he's moving, my sister here in South Florida is helping him move. She sees the manuscript and she asks him about it. He says, well, it's it's this love story tribute to a friend. She does this lo love story, dad. <laughs> I was like, really? She reads it. She loves it. She calls me in LA knowing I'm in the trying to get into the movie business. She says, mm -hmm. you have to read this. Dad wrote a love story. And so, of course, I get the the is on eight by 10 papers and I read the thing and I am in tears, right? I called dad. I said, kind of, what are you doing with this? He says, nothing really. It's like a tribute to, but I want to buy the rights. So I do. And as it turns out, I thought how nepotistic of me, you know, that dad wrote a great story. It's my dad. Right. <laughs> and so, yeah. Right. And so I, I call a friend of mine who's producing a movie at the time. And I say, listen, I want you to read this and just tell me what you think. And of course, he says, I'm in the middle of something. Three days later, he calls me up. He says, I couldn't put it down. I love this. This is amazing. And of course, we had wanted to produce it. But, you know, he ended up running into troubles with his distributor. I ended up going to Latin America to produce uh, game shows. Uh, more on that later. And we said, you know, one of these days we're going to do that. Now, keep yeah. in mind, this was more than 40 years ago and the world has changed. I mean, then the world of film and television distribution was controlled by a handful of studios. 
Right. That has changed with the streamers, right? So mm -hmm. opportunity has now presented itself, even though it's a challenging business. Yeah. So what I did was, you know, I, I ran through my life and, you know, I built a technology company, which I recently sold. And I said, Doug, my partner, I'm going to publish the book and we're going to turn around and take this from what we thought was once a movie and create a series and do a much deeper dive into these characters and what's going on. Mm -hmm. So then you're going to say, oh, okay, Henry, tell me more because, you know, what's going on? What is this story about? Wait, I'm interviewing myself. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> well, I do. I want to know more about what this story is about. And, and you know, give me some more details. You've got me hooked. You know, you 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 told me a little before and now, you know, you're you're going into it here, but... I'm, you know, just, just the, the way you described it and, and, and how you never knew that your father, because you told me he was a Marine originally, he, he wrote a love story. When you think of a Marine, you think of this big tough guy, you don't think about love and romance and, you know, the soft part of every man, you know, you know, or, you know, what could be, you know, a softy inside, but they're a hard shell on the outside it must have shocked the hell out of you when you said you realized dad wrote this romantic love story, you know? Without a doubt. I mean, he was a Marine. He was a hard ass. He was sort of philandering whore, for lack of a better term. <laughs> he was an adventurer. I mean, he was not your soft, cuddly, warm, fuzzy kind of guy, right? Yeah. I mean, really funny guy, very gregarious, but I don't know if I ever got a hug from him in my entire life, right? That's right. the kind of like yes, a macho kind of guy, right? So right, to read right. the the tenderness and the passion, you just went, huh? Wait, this does not compute, right? <laughs> Obviously, there's something in there that needed to come out and came out on the paper, but yeah. not the physical reality that he lived, right? Right. So the story really is. This is based on historical fact. There was a woman in the late 1800s named Marie Bashkirtseff. And Marie, between 14 and 24, wrote a journal every day. And she spoke as candidly and honestly as she could about life and love and herself. And she wrote about things that women in the 1800s wouldn't even talk about, like virginity and mass masturbation and things like wow. that. So she dies at 24 of tuberculosis. Two years after her death, her mother publishes her journal, and it becomes an international bestseller. Wow. 70 years later, a guy buys the book. It's called I Am the Most Interesting Book of All. And he begins reading about her and her life, and he starts finding himself attracted to the author, Marie. And then he'd go out on dates, and he'd still find himself comparing the dates to this fictitious woman that he's reading about or this historical woman yeah. and then finds himself fallen in love with her yeah. finally he visits her tomb and he realizes this is crazy i have fallen in love with the dead woman this is this is not right <laughs> right and eventually you know he's on leave by the way he's a, he's an army officer he's on leave but he comes back to paris on a on a 3 day sabbatical and he finds marie reincarnated and sort of that's the the gestation of the the story and he tells this story to my father who said you know i recounted the story as best i could because when he told me he says listen i'm going back to war if something were to happen i would like somebody to know the story and the reason i didn't tell anybody before is because i was kind of embarrassed about being in love with this dead woman so i didn't want to even tell anybody but now that i found her reincarnated I have to tell you what happened and I have to tell you the whole story. So the, the book is about this story where, you know, uh, he finds her reincarnation and the series, which will springboard from the book is a much deeper dive. It's now labeled or the working title is called slipping, like slipping through time. Mm -hmm. And it deals with all of the previous lives in Marie's era and how they come back and they interface and intertwine with our protagonist, his name is Jonathan, his life in the 70s, right? Mm -hmm. And how all of the previous karmatic things are happening or, you know, sins of the father. And, you know, is this really a soulmate? Does that exist? Do we find our soulmate in every life? Is it this 
beautiful, happy thing? Or do we have to work out our karma, you know, like love, hate being two sides of the same coin? These yes. are a lot of the, we don't ask the questions outright, but it begs those questions. Like, is this really yeah. a, a, a slipping through time with a metaverse or is it a reincarnation thing? Is there such a thing as soulmates? And that's kind of the, the, the series puts out all these pieces to the puzzle and then it all starts to come together in the end. That is so cool. And, and they say with reincarnation that, you know, people get reincarnated and they stay within the same vicinity. So you are around the people that you previously had in, in other lives. So you do have a chance to connect with those people. And a lot of times you do connect with those people and you just don't realize it because our brain is not equipped to realize more than 10%. It's all in our subconscious. So, right. you know, sometimes when you meet somebody, you're like, wow, I feel like I've known this person a lifetime. Right. You might, you know, it's a possibility that you know yeah. that person previously. And I also talk about having to work through previous issues or getting rewarded for previous uh, deeds in a previous life. So at the end of the day, you sort of look at this and you say, okay, so have I met this person before? Or is this happening to me because of something that I did really bad or good in a previous life, right? Right. Those are the sort of the, the overarching themes in our lifetime. Now, we talk about this reincarnation because Marie in her book, in her, in her journal, she says, I feel like I am going to find you in time. This is one of the reasons he falls in love. He believes she's coming back for him, right? And she says, you know, the sad part about reincarnation is I'll come back with many of my same personality characteristics, but I'll have forgotten everything I learned in this life, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. she, she talks about this very thing in her journal and he reads it and he's like, oh my God, she's, I've got to find her, right? So yeah. you kind of ask those questions. It's like, is this really something out there? I mean, is there more than just this and that's a question. Those are questions actually that a lot of people wonder about, you know, that yeah. go through their minds. And, uh, you know, the, the fact that you can possibly, you know, be reincarnated and, and maybe find that person. Or, like you said, you're reading a memoir that was written, you know, decades and or 100 years ago. And, you know, that person could be somewhere here. You know, right. I've read books where there were make-believe characters, but I got so attached to the character. It's like you want to meet that person, you know, and you know it's a fake character, but yet the way it's described and the way the person portrays themselves in the story and the way they act and, you know, it just, it just captivates you. And it just like, it blows you away where, wow, wouldn't that be amazing if I could find that person or in another right. lifetime be attached to that person, you know, right. and be able to, you know, have some type of relationship or friendship or something with the person, you know, or, you know, it's, 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 we don't really think about these things too often. You talk about maybe reincarnation in a generalized way, most people, but we, you don't, we really dive deep into these topics because, it, and if you do, like, it really is an exciting topic to think about that your person that you read about, or if you read a memoir from a long time ago, there's a chance maybe you will connect with that person, you know? And if you do connect with someone that is very similar, is it that person? Or is it just someone with similar traits? Will we ever know, you know? Right, absolutely. And, the, and therein lies sort of the rub is, obviously we don't know the answers to the questions and we have this sort of narcissistic concept of, is this all there is? There's gotta be more, what more is there now? Yeah. Now learn there are weird things like metaverse things or quarks. We can be in two places at once. Whoa. And <laughs> why is it that I feel like I've been there before or that I've known this person? And so those are the types of things that are explored and, and questions that are asked um, in, in this whole series. Now, we don't get as clean and linear in the series as it is in the book we have lots of twists and turns because we're looking at that saying you know love and hate both sides of the same coin and yeah. if i saw my soulmate would i connect in every life the answer is maybe probably not and if i did do i have to learn something from somebody that i thought was my soulmate and then i ended up you know 
divorcing or hating them, if you will. Yes. So those are those are those are deep questions because we we live in a world of constantly trying to figure out what's going on. Like you said, 10% of our brain. Okay, so what else is going on here? Right? Yeah. Mm hmm. You know, and imagine if we were able to activate, it could be a dangerous thing too, if you were able to activate more than 10% of our brain, you know, everything happens for a reason, you know, and that's why we're here. And that's why we, the oxygen produce, you know, the trees produce oxygen and everything has a reason for being here. There's a reason for us not being able to activate more than 10% of our brain. But a right. lot of times I say too, through our dreams, we, you know, we kind of sometimes dip into our subconscious and that's what brings out a lot of these issues or dreams or sensations when we're dreaming, you know, it comes out, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I really like, you know, I like the fact that you've written the book and now there's going to be a series because I always, I always think you should do both. Like you have to, you have to read the book and you have to see the series. It's like, you know, it's like, it's, it, it just goes hand in hand, you know? And, and my question to you is like, you got this script, it was your father's, but what really made you want to pursue it? Not just because, you know, you were stunned by the way you read, you know, and you read it, you didn't know that dad had all this romanticness about him. You didn't, you, you didn't never knew that or expected that he had a soft side to him like this, you know, but was there something, you know, besides, you know, your sister saying to, you know, motivating you that you wanted to really tell the world this, this story, like was there something that captivated you in, in this memoir and the script? I wish there was a deeper sort of revelation here, but the truth of the matter is, you know, when I, when I went to LA and I had my little childhood fantasy, you know, I was 22, I guess, 23 of producing and directing in the movie business. And then you find out, well, it's not really, you don't just show up and they give you a, here you go, here's a movie, go produce it. Right. <laughs> uh, the idea was really my, my dream since I was 16 is to get into the business, right? I did yeah. by producing travel films and then opportunity presented itself. And I ended up producing game shows in Chile and Latin America. And then I came back again, opportunity presents itself. I start doing virtual tours, these 360 tours of, of travel sites. And yeah. then hotels would say, how do we get this on this new world wide web thingy again this is the mid 90s the late 90s yeah yeah and i'm like i don't know send them a cd rom and they said <laughs> yeah they don't know what to do with it there are no standards so eventually as luck and opportunity would have it i find myself building a company with technology that would help manage and distribute photos so now if you go on to any travel website like Expedia or Booking or Henry's Travel, for that matter, and yeah. you see pictures of a Hilton or a Hyatt or a Wyndham or any hotel, yes, that would come from our servers. Because we would collect, we would pull down uh, images from the hotel groups and the management companies, size, tag, categorize, and send them everywhere. So that was yeah. my tech company. And so I sold that. I did well. And as a result, I thought, okay, now I don't want to just sit around and, you know, pick my nose. I want to do my, I want to go back full circle and fulfill that dream. Or as the pun goes, I want to close that chapter, publish the book and develop the book's concept into a, a series because it's such a cool concept. You fall in love with a historical figure that had notoriety. You know, one of the things that I thought was cool is recently... We had a review on Amazon that said speechless. And I'm like, oh, I got to read. Well, who, who wrote that? What is that? And they said, I'm reading the book and I read about this Marie Barshkirchev. And I'm thinking, did she really exist? He goes and stops reading, Googles the woman, finds that she was a true historical figure. She still has paintings and museums around the world. And yeah. it finds even more appeal because this is based on a true journal and a true woman. And so... That concept, you know, you fall in love with, it's not all this foo-foo making it up in your mind. This woman yes. existed. She wrote about reincarnation. She wrote about love and, and finding you in the future in time. So she in the late 1800s was ahead of her time. Yes. Oh, hundred percent. And I always yeah. feel like everything happens for a reason and the story and her legacy, you know, it keeps moving and you know it's it, it just seems like you know it's it's so possible it's so possible that yeah. you know 
because you know they always say too is that you always there's always someone out there that is like the identical of you you know there's so and it's true well, like, <laughs> so stacy i'm sorry i never really answered the question so why am i doing it is it but it one because i always wanted to do that but since i read it true story i could not get it out of my mind and doug my partner and i have decided one of these days because it is so warm touching and we like the paranormal part of it like what is going on do we really I mean, you know, they now have studies about DNA things like people who have gone through traumas and their grandchildren are now affected through DNA and yeah. people who go, oh, you know, I have this trauma and I don't know why. And there was maybe a reincarnated thing. So there's all kinds of, it's just very interesting concepts. So yeah. we explore that. That's why the slip in could be slipping through the metaverse, through slipping through time, slipping into reincarnation. It's sort of a, you know, and the, the, the slipping is a sl an S that's sliding off that almost closes the loop like an infinity circle. Wow. And now, and does this, this book have like a closing or is there kind of like a hook line or at the end? Uh, well, there is a closing that people find bittersweet. The cl <laughs> what happens in the book is the story is told to my father. He writes the book, but he gets wind that the guy was killed. So he has to go and he has to tell the reincarnated Marie, her name is Maria, about this story, right? And when he goes back three days earlier, he finds that she too had passed. And wow. he says, wait, you were his friend because she couldn't stop talking about him. She has on her, on her deathbed, she made me write this letter and he reads the letter, right? So the mom reads the letter to him. And so the two were buried side by side as a result. But at the end of the day, the bittersweetness is, well, if we believe in reincarnation, they both passed at an early age. Now they have an opportunity of getting back in a future life and find them, yes. finding themselves again. So yes. whatever you believe, it's like, oh, no. OK, so they get a fresh start. Oh, yeah. OK, that's nice. You know. Well, that could actually be a sequel because when the when the body erodes and the and the and the spiritual energy arises because our body is full of that's what runs our body is energy. So you know where does that spirit where does that energy go? They could yep. actually you know arise and go into reincarnate into bodies that are close to one another, and they could actually form another life. Yep. Together. And thus, Thank thus you. the concept of season one, if if these people, if these souls continue to reincarnate, they can be any place in time and history. So yeah. you can have a season two and beyond with these same souls continuing on. See, I have a great imagination. I could be your co-director. <laughs> there you go. Bring it on, baby. Well, I'm not going to direct. I, I wish I had the talent to direct. I'm going to just bring <laughs> the IP to the table as the executive producer. I'll let the people who are in the industry and know what to do, they do what they do. All right, you be the executive producer. I'll be either the producer or the co-producer. <laughs> bring it on, baby. Now for your book, where can people find this book? So I'm really so, hooked. I want to get a copy myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The easiest place, because uh, I have a website called MarieTheStory.com. And that includes, there's a bunch of places you can buy the book. Obviously, Amazon is the most ubiquitous because it's the largest bookseller in the world. But ironically, there's also an audible version because when oh, I asked great. the publisher, I said, you know, do I need to find a voiceover talent? And they said, well, why don't you do it? I mean, you've got a good voice. So I said, what? <laughs> and, and she says, no, that would be a great tribute for your dad. And I'm like, okay. So dad wrote it. I voice the audio version and my nephew, his grandson, does the piano, the Chopin piano transitions because he's a wow. you know, pianist virtuoso. So we've got three generations involved in the audio portion. But MarieTheStory.com has information about the book, has information about my father, and has information about the series. And there's also links to, you know, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, stuff like that. Wow. And is it, is the audio that the book is out? Is the audio book out yet? Yep. Oh, wonderful. It is. just came out. 
Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. That's great. And when do you plan to have the series out? When did it, when when is there like a, a date or like a, an estimated time when they think they'll start working on it or if they're working on it right now? If I had those psychic abilities, you know, the industry, it could take a couple yes. of months or a couple of years. So, right. you know, what's happened in the industry is things have slowed down since the heyday of everybody throwing money at an arms race to get content produced. Mm -hmm. That is slowing the world down because everybody's looking at their budget saying whoa let's not overspend or let's go externally right, right. and then right. there's a fear factor of ai and so i wish i could say 2026 but i don't know right that means okay. that later this year beginning of 2025 we get a deal well, then we go into pre-production and rewrites and then we start going into production at the end of 2025 beginning of 2026 edit you get the idea it's a yeah. long and sorted process. Right. Yes. But you know, for now, this this book is it seems like it's gonna be an amazing book. It seems like it's gonna be a bestseller because it's just it's just the the story, the concept. And, and you could actually use your imagination to really like like we just said, you could, you know, anything could happen from there there on, you know. That's um, exactly right. Yeah. You know, so that's a, a really exciting concept too. Yeah, I mean, the concept is very unique because how many books you've, you've read and seen movies and stories. I mean, there are things that are close, like Outlander that's out there as a series. Uh, <laughs> there was an old movie by Christopher Reeve called Somewhere in Time. Yes. Uh, but the concepts were generally somewhat based on historical fictions. And this is as well, but it isn't as this is a very unique concept that he finds a specific person that he read about from history that he then found her reincarnated right because he when he talks to her she says the things he knows what the answers are because he's read her book multiple times he right. knows what she's going to wear he knows the music her tastes and likes and dislikes because he knows everything about her she's written about herself for 10 years right i mean very intimate details so when yeah. he asks the new reincarnated Marie, uh, she answers in, in ways that he says, I already knew what she was going to say. I know what her favorite color is are. I know what her favorite music is and so on. Wow. I love right? that. That is Trippy. crazy. Yeah. It's, uh, it's something, you know, it, it, it's just, it blows my mind. Like, it's just, it's a real, like, you know, you could, cause you, when you think about it, it's like, wow. You know, I could see that happening too, very easily when, if people are really into the character, which a lot of times that happens all the time. People, sure. people read, they see movies or they read books and they get so into the character. And even though we know in the back of our head, the character isn't actually real, you know, for some people, it can, you know, you know, depending on the person's imagination, it can be a, a, like a like a, a turn point, turning point, because then they're, they're going to try to look for that person, that person who meets that gives them that excitement, that that, you know, that joy, that, you know, sense of, uh, you know, fulfilling areas maybe in their lives that they haven't, you know, really fulfilled yet. And then they go hunting for that person, you know, and exactly. And, Wait, wait, it, are you trying to tell me that Homer Simpson does not exist? <laughs> I thought no. he did. <laughs> my idol, no. <laughs> He's my son's idol. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's funny. Sorry, I digress. I'm my chi the child in me is coming out. <laughs> now, if you had to take everything we talked about today, and there are some specific points that you really like to emphasize about this book and about the concepts and everything we talked about, are there certain things you'd like to emphasize to the listeners that you really want to get across today? You know, it, sort of, I, you know, first of all, I become more appreciative of stories and, and, and thoughts like this as I get older, because when I was younger and I read this book as a you know manuscript, I was in tears and I'm like, okay. So then I read it again when I republished it about six months ago, I read it again and I was in tears again. But I think more so now because the intensity of the feelings and the sort of the thought process, I guess, as you sort of sit back and, and age, you sort of think of the impermanence and the immortality and the sensitivity of life yes and that's where it sends sort of this heartfelt message right even though it's a bittersweet ending it still gives you hope that okay maybe there's more than just 
this. And yes. I think that would probably be the message. Oh, I love that. I love that. And I have to say, I think there is more than just this, you know, but to have a book that could, you know, you could actually engulf and 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 go and dive deep into and, and then imagine as you're reading and it kind of brings the hope up of it could be possible. You know, there's more people out there that think the same thing, you know, the same way I do, you know, so it, it gives hope to what's next you know we'd like uh, to think so because otherwise it's pretty sad and you know like what's the point of it all you know yes exactly i think there is something out there i do i really do you know what i don't know but you know eventually one day i'll find out but <laughs> yeah and then you won't be able to tell your next when you reincarnate oh, God, I, I i had it somewhere i knew it's possible but what the hell is it yeah, exactly. I'll be the one that's taking the light bulbs because I'm energy and I'll just be shutting the light bulbs on and off, scaring the hell out of my kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're going to be a ghost. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I got to tell you, Henry, this has been a pleasure. Uh, thank you so much for coming on this show. And I wish you the best of luck with this book and the sequel that's going to come out in the future. And this is going to be amazing. And like I said, I'll be the first one. I'm going to order this book because it's just, it's amazing. I love romance books. So it just, uh, this is a very exciting one that, that I definitely want to check out. So thank you, thank Stacey. You so I hope everybody loves it. And if you have any comments, let me know. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. Oh, great. I thank you so much. And you have a great day. Thank you. Ciao. Ciao.